So hi guys, photographing from home again and uh, today I thought I'd mess around with some balloon popping. So um, I use the um, RX10 Mark IV for this which obviously has up to 1000 frames per second but also it can do 24 photos per second. So I set these for stills first of all which you'll see in a second um, but basically just uh, pre-focused, set my shutter speed and set my ISO and also locked the focus in uh, manual so I knew it was correctly in focus and uh, basically just um, pop the balloon and uh, just held my finger down on the on the shutter button and basically it just allowed uh, me to because of the frame rate so fast basically you can pick and choose which shot you actually want unfortunately it wasn't as sunny as I wanted because this camera can go up to one thirty two thousandth of a second shutter speed and I, even though I could have used flash as well um, I just wanted to use natural light to start off with so um, basically this is uh, the first few shots as you can see at 24 photos per second I slowed these two down because they're kind of like key photos um, and as you can see all the water droplets and everything happening after so first couple here um, work quite well uh, slow motion as well um, started off at 250 frames per second or, and worked up to a thousand so uh, yeah it looks look pretty good so far Little tip, guys, if you're going to clean the front element of your RX10, make sure it's turned off. Reason being, there's pressure sensors on the lens, so basically, if you put too much pressure on hot, it doesn't take much actually, it will stop it um, zooming in and out. So, you have to turn it off and on back on again anyway, otherwise, you might think it's actually broken. So, this balloon here just had air in it, but I'd actually tried filling it up with water, but actually, it split. So, I managed to, I emptied it out. There's actually a little bit of water vapor still left in it, which had actually added quite a cool little explosion of uh, water vapour um, that was literally just where the top bit actually split when I had it on the tap and I was just trying to fill it up so fortunately that didn't work so this is the uh, the first red balloon this is at um, 500 frames per second and uh, it worked quite well um, as you can see there it still held its shape for a, a, a millisecond there and then the water droplets and everything just tumbling down uh, looked uh, looked quite cool. Unfortunately when you're shooting this frame rate the, um, the camera has to upscale because it can't physically um, record um, at 500 frames per second or 1000 frames per second at full HD um, let alone 4K so um, it has to upscale so the quality is lower than you would expect unfortunately but it still allows you to try and experiment and things like this so this is now 1000 frames per second as you can see they are quite a lot slower um, but as you can see also the quality has dropped um, unfortunately but that's where hopefully the next camera they release at some point um, will have a higher um, higher quality uh, video in HFR mode um, that would be really really nice um, because I love slow motion it's so interesting to see things you can't see normally in uh, in the real world um, if you're doing still photos rather than trying to do um, slow motion video it's a case of just perseverance um, yes you can also use the uh, myops trigger or um, the Pluto trigger um, which go on sound or laser um, or um, light changing uh, they're very good but I think doing it yourself manually is always going to have a bit more charm and actually the fact that you did it yourself rather than having a computer with a sensor and everything do it for you because you might as well just walk away and leave it to it um, this is another thousand frames per second shot the camera's pretty much underneath it but just out just about out of the way but you can see all the ripples go up the, up the blue now as I pop it um, that was quite cool and it's just where it tumbles down but uh, yeah no really really um, interesting way of doing it um, I have got a few more balloons left so I may even do another video with flash rather than uh, a thing but we'll see how we go uh, yeah so here's some of the photos um, at a slower, slower rate so you can actually sort of see them so obviously the little pin there, a balloon sitting as it was and this is as I say one four thousandth of a second uh, and you can see it, it still didn't even uh, fix that balloon it still managed to have a bit of movement blow on that balloon that's the sort of the the best shot and then it started falling down and down um, but yeah no really quite pleased and I thought I'd aim up at the sky because normally people just shoot across the garden or whatever and I thought you know what, actually having a bit of blue sky and clouds in the distance might actually be a bit different and it actually brought the water droplets into a bit more interest as well and actually showed up more more than I thought they might so I actually did wonder if they were sort of dis would disappear into the uh, the image but they didn't actually so it was kind of cool uh, something a little bit different so yeah maybe think um, about a background maybe I'd try a different background so the inspiration of this uh, shoot today was um, a YouTuber friend of mine um, 
Dave McKeegan. He's um, got a YouTube channel, as I said. Uh, very, very interesting guy. Um, his videos are completely different to mine, which is really nice because you know lots of different things going on. Um, he's got a really, really good lineup of different um, lenses, reviews, and uh, he basically did a um, what we're going to do in kind of the quarantine self isolation thing. And one of them was obviously uh, uh, balloon popping. Uh, doing photos of balloon popping. Obviously, I've gone the slow motion route down this uh, kind of thing. But yeah, check his check his channel out. It's very very good, uh, very watchable. I've been watching his stuff uh, for quite a while as well, and it's always nice to see something a little bit different um, other than my own work. So, and obviously other YouTubers out there as well. So I'm just going to now show you how I set up my RX10 Mark IV um, for HFR mode, um, just briefly, so you can kind of understand and get your head around the slow motion video. So, setting up the um, RX10 Mark IV or the RX100s um, or even any of the other RX10s for um, HFR mode or slow motion mode, you can shoot normal video, obviously, at 100 frames per second or 4K um, at 25 uh, frames per second. Uh, 100 frames per second is quite nice for sort of four times slow motion. It's quite nice, say, if, like a surfer coming in or something like that. It's quite cool. Plus, obviously, you get sound and full autofocus. When you move up to 250, 500 and 1000 frames per second, you get no autofocus and you kind of have to set your shot up. It's a completely different kind of uh, videography. Um, if you watch the slow-mo guys uh, on YouTube, um, they are the sort of masters of, um, of uh, slow motion. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do here, so basically to set it up you need to push your dial, your left dial on top of your camera um, or the settings or whatever to get to HFR mode um, is there. So normally you'd be like in, I don't know, manual or uh, shutter priority or something like that and you just go around until you find um, HFR mode, wherever it is. I've gone past it. Yep, no, I've gone past it by two. Um, there you go. So HFR mode. I have it in manual on my side, on my camera. You can use it in auto. It works quite well. Um, but having full control over your depth, your shutter speed, and everything like that is is quite good once you get up to speed with it and once you understand it a little bit more. So basically, um, I've got it uh, the ability to adjust my shutter speed. So at the moment, I've got it set at 250 frames a second, which actually allows me a 250th of a second minimum shutter speed. Ideally, want that at 500. There's a kind of an old school rule of doubling a frame rate I believe I might, might be wrong on this but uh, I generally sort of work on that I mean it still works pretty good at 250th of a second not a problem at all then you've got your aperture control so you can shut your lens down for a bit more depth or shallower depth of field and obviously ISO control which I generally leave at 100 if I can and uh, you know that's the kind of basic setup in my FN or uh, function menu, quick menu, I've actually got my frame rate set in there. So basically I can quickly go, or I'd actually quite like to do 500, 500 frames per second or 1,000 frames per second. It's, it's there for easy sort of access. Okay. So it automatically jumps to the minimum shutter speed if you are there. So it's now um, 500 frames per second. And basically, you've got two options here. So if we go into HFR mode, so basically you go into menu camera number two, which is that top one there, and you come down to HFR settings. You've got four little uh, menus here. So you've got record setting, which is the um, just the, one of the record uh, rates, basically the bit rate, I suppose. Um, and then you've got frame rates, which obviously I've added in a shortcut to it. So it saves you having to go into the menu all the time. And then you've got priority settings. So I go for quality, but you can go for shoot time. So obviously it's going to give you a little bit longer. If it lowers the quality, it can give you a little bit longer on the uh, on the slow motion. But I generally leave it at quality. Um, this is where the other bits, this is where it's very different. So we've got start trigger, which is, so for example, we have, um, you've got your friend with you or an assistant of some sort and you're going to smash a mug on the ground. You set your shot up, you set your focus points, um, you set, your shot, set your shutter speed and your ISO and everything like that, get it ready. If you need lighting or you've got the sun out, um, you know you, just, you need to make sure you've got everything set ready to go. And then if you're stood by the camera, 
you can actually uh, go right three, two, one, and then they'll drop the, the mug. You then push the record button and it records straight away. Problem is, you've only got maybe three to seven seconds, depending on uh, you know uh, the sort of time gap that you've actually um, set it. So, um, but with start trigger, obviously you do get the full buffer. I should have said that. Start trigger uses the full buffer and it will record up to around about seven seconds, depending on the camera as well. So if you're using one of the older RX-10s, they are uh, not quite as big a buffer. If you then go on to end trigger, this is what I was, this is what I was talking about, three to seven seconds. You've got um, end trigger, which is the full buffer, and end trigger half, which is around about three to three and a half seconds uh, buffer time. And this works differently. So if I go into that, for example, and we come out, you set everything up, you would focus your camera and everything like that, and then you just push the middle button. It prepares. And now what that is actually doing, it's looping. So basically it's just going to be recording constantly. But it's not recording to your card, it's just recording through the RAM or the buffer in the camera. It's just sitting there going around, 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 watching things happen. And then basically now I can drop, I can drop the mug on my own. You know, or I can still have the assistant do it, it's not really a problem, but it just allows me to do things by myself because I can't be behind the camera and over there dropping stuff at the same time. <laughs> so basically now I can drop the mug, smash, and then quickly oh, push record. And then once you push record, it's processing and recording to the card. Um, the fact that it's got no card in the moment, but that you know, basically that's what happens. And that allows you to basically experiment yourself and I I generally do use it this way because for example if you've got a plane in the sky or a helicopter in the sky I literally put it on a loop and I watch and you think okay that's perfect and then bang I can pick them up pick the moment I actually want the recording rather than having to sort of go right now oh, and I've already missed it kind of thing so it's it's very it's quite complicated when you, once you first start but it's actually quite simple when you kind of get used to messing around with it um, it's really, really quite good because you've got 24 to 600 millimeters on this camera to play around with. So I've had helicopters in slow motion hovering, you know, quite close where the mobile phone camera can't do that. Mobile phones are quite good at doing this um, and they have their, their moments because they're in your pocket all the time. So you can do some cool stuff uh, quite easily. Um, but this is a different situation. So just thought I'd show you how to do that. And the way with the balloons and everything today was I could have done with some more sunlight. Unfortunately, the clouds came over and I had a couple of little small patches of, of sunshine, but it didn't last very long. So I couldn't really uh, get the best out of it, but it didn't do it too bad. Um, but yeah, so it's all in all, in all it's, um, it's pretty good. Hopefully that's helped some people understand. And uh, obviously every camera is different, but a lot of cameras now do have a higher frame rate. Some do uh, 100, 120, um, 250 frames per second anyway. So mess around with those and see how you get on. But obviously me being a Sony user and I have the RX10, um, it allows me to do up to a thousand. Um, I know some of the, I think the Panasonics do as well, possibly. Not really sure, but um, if you've got a camera that can do it, enjoy. Um, it's just a case of messing around. Um, all the systems are going to be slightly different, obviously. Um, but this is just anybody who's using a Sony. Um, hopefully, it's kind of helps you sort of move in that direction a little bit. Um, any questions, please ask. Uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button and also uh, the little notification bell because I'm going to keep doing little videos like this. Hopefully, it causes some interest or it's in, it. Hopefully, we'll keep people um, a bit of you know, giving people a bit of enthusiasm and a bit of um, sort of you know, get get up and go and just experiment. You know, a lot of photographers out there only do one thing. I've never been like that. I've always just thought, okay, today I might do a bit of portraiture. I, mean, I love doing portraiture, but I love doing macro um, landscapes and stuff like that. I'm far from the best photographer in the world, far from it. Um, but I've got the passion to learn. And experiment so and I think that's one of the most important things that we all have is just experiment don't be afraid to try new things end of the day we're now using digital it's not like we're using film you know when the old days of film where you know it cost you money every time you took a picture if we've got these cameras and you own them they cost you nothing